On this edition of InCycle, ahead of the Tour de France, we look at an icon of Spanish cycling, Miguel Indurain. If they want a real example of a, a sports person who did not become somebody else, they should look at Miguel Indurain. We catch up with Peter Sagan's childhood coach to see how it all started for the world champion. The commentator, when he starts to make Peťovi, he says Žilinčan. We know that it is from our city. All the Žilinčan are on him. But first, it's the resurgent Shara Gillow. Having left Dutch squad Rabo Liv last winter to take up a leadership role with France's FDJ, Shara Gillow is currently enjoying arguably the best season of her career. Along with a handful of top 10 finishes, she animated the recent women's tour with her breakaway efforts on stages three and four. I guess it has been a sort of a breakthrough season. Being with the, the French team, I've really found my place and being able to mentor uh, the younger riders as well. It's, I love helping them and, and trying to show them what I've learned over the years. This is my sixth year as a professional cyclist and it's the first time ever that I've, I've had the opportunity to be a leader in, in the team and to have people help me because I've always just helped people and been a domestic and gotten results on my own accord, sort of, yeah, so to speak. And yeah, so it's, it's been a great year and I'm, I'm really happy with the start. I love Strada Bianchi with the, the dirt roads. It's a little bit like home in Australia if I take the shortcut um, out the back. Shara Gillow absolutely flying around these lanes. Great ride here by the 29-year-old Australian. She was second in the National TT Championships of Australia and fifth in the road race, so she's in very, very good form at the moment. And all she needs is for that front group just to start finessing a little bit and it could play into her hands. Here she goes. In fact, she's going to go straight past him. Straight past. Absolutely fantastic. She uses the width of the road to go clear. What a ride by Shara Gillow. And there's no reaction from the group behind. Fascinating racing. Two k's to go. It was pretty exciting because after the race, there was a lot of girls and a lot of um, people that, uh, yeah, that said, whoa, whoa, there's Shara Gillow. Whoa, who is this person? I think I even surprised myself. <laughs> no, it was a really cool race. and. I think it kicked the season off yeah, with a good start. <laughs> My dad always used to describe me as like a bulldog. <laughs> I would never let go. And yeah, when it gets harder and harder, it's, um, yeah, I like it. You're looking at the uh, new lone leader. This is uh, Shara Gillow. Ran about 30 kilometres into this stage. The leaders were swept up and he gave this rider an opportunity to go clear. Shara, it's, uh, it's amazing in the team uh, this year because I think she had a different uh, mission uh, last year with, uh, with Waberly. She, uh, she is a bit uh, leader and protecting the team, so she take a maximum opportunity. She be she is uh, aggressive and she take a uh, maximum pleasure. Yeah, I think it's uh, more important when you are you are wider. Because yeah, I'm Australian. <laughs> it's the the culture is it's pretty easy going, and coming over to the French team, um, it's more um, more of a relaxed environment, and um, I think just to have take pleasure and have fun racing, that's what I really like. I'd lived in Nice um, 2014 and on near the French Riviera and it was yeah really beautiful and amazing but being immersed into this the French team it's getting to know it like really what it is for like the French culture and the way that the people are it's it's nice. And with FDJ coming on board as sponsors this season Gillow was not her new team's only major international signing for 2017. A bigger budget also helped them secure the services of Roxanne Knetemann and Japanese road race champion Eri Yonamine. Now it's, uh, I think, the new start for the team with a new sponsor like uh, LDG. But uh, yeah, we have really a big mo motivation for uh, become uh, the big team in the future and I hope the first, uh, the first team uh, for the HCIO. I was really surprised that there's only now one team that's that's really big in France because there's, I reckon there's a lot of talent in France, but it's just, yeah, to step up into the bigger teams, it's 
um, yeah, I think this team and the sponsors, it's really important for the women cycling in France because the men have, yeah, they have quite a few pro teams and to make it grow in France, it's, I think, yeah, really, really important what I've noticed within this team for the women's, yeah, cycling development in France. I think they see it as a way of growing faster is just to let some international riders in with the experience and to try and bring them up and that's that's the goal is to make them better and if we can show them a little bit how it's done in in Australia or in Holland then or Japan then um yeah share experiences and I think that's one way that we can grow faster. Peter Sagan je človek, ktorý čo si zoberie do hlavy, tak za tým ide. Aj keď nám ostatným sa to veľakrát zdá nezmyselnosť, absurdnosť, nemôže dokázať. Peter veľakrát tvrdá hlavo, za tým, za tým ide a dokáže. Každé dieťa tu začína s horskou cyklistikou, to znamená mountain bike, horská cyklistika je niečo, s čím začínajú naše deti až potom prechádzajú na cestnú cyklistiku. A to bolo aj v Petrom prípade, začínal na horskej cyklistike a on mal rád tie zjazdiky, tie stúpania, jazdu v lese a neskôr pridával aj tú cestnú cyklistiku. A musím povedať, že ja som bol práve ten, ktorý povedal, že teda Peťo, ak raz vyhráš Olympiádu, tak to bude na horskej cyklistike, ale v ceste budeš dobrý, ale nie špička, to sa ti asi nepodarí. Ta konkurencia je obrovská a Peter urobil trošku inak a urobil, urobil dobre. Peter keď štartoval na jednej z prvej súťaží a bolo to v Dubnici nad Váhom, horská cyklistika, Petra som pripravil na ten štart a išiel som na prvý kopček, kde som Petra čakal. No a bolo odštartované a zrazu pozerám, ch- idú deti, deti a Petra nikde. Tak som sa vrátil naspäť. A videl som tam Peťa, ktorý plakal, bol na zemi a čo je Peťo? Na koleno som si na, narazil o, o riaditka. To už sa nedá. Ja som Petra takto zdvihol, položil na ten bicykel a som ho roztiahol a ideš. Plakal, nechcel ísť, ale samozrejme už mu nič neostalo, tak išiel. No a mali preteky na jedno kolo, tak ja som išiel do cieľa. Prišiel som do cieľa a tam bol taký, taký skok, zátačka a cieľ a prvý skočil maďarský spadná z Maďarska bol pretekár, prvý skočil, už ľudia mu tlieskali, že teda víťaz a zrazu za chvíľočku to nie ako on, že kopíroval, ale do tej zátačky zrazu skočil Peter, zároveň s maďarským pretekárom a finiš, až fotofiniš rozhodol, že Peter vyhral a vtedy som si prvýkrát povedal, tak tento chalan, to je, to je víťazný typ. Takže na týchto miestach to, 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 to sú chodničky, chodničky Petra Sagana, kde naozaj tu každý, každý deň, pokiaľ nebol tréning na cestnom bicykle, tu jazdil. A vidíme, že tá technika Petra Sagana je úžasná. Vidíme to na cestných bicykloch. A tu sa práve naučil tu techniku, ktorú Peter má, vynikajúco zjazdovať. Naozaj málo pretikárov, ktorí dokážu to, čo dokáže, že Peter v zjazdoch. Tak my Žilinčania sme veľmi hrdí na Petra. To srdiečko vždy hovorí, že Peťo je Žilinčan, je náš a každý komentátor, keď začína správy o Peťovi, tak sa povie Žilinčan. Vieme, vieme, že to je z nášho mesta. Všetci Žilinčania sú na ňo hrdí. Takže e, samozrejme e, mám obrovskú radosť e, z toho, čo Peter e, dosiahol. Dosiahol niečo nielen pre e, žilinskú e, cyklistiku, žilinský šport, ale slovenský e, ako taký. Peter začínal u nás, keď bol takýto, takýto maličký, mal, mal 9 rokov a ja som s Petrom raz bol na majstrovstvá sveta v Kaprune, v Rakúsku. A stáli sme tam ako diváci a Peter sa pozeral na tých pretekárov elit a ja som Peťovi hovoril, Peťo pozeraj, keď budeš trénovať, veľa trénovať, tak budeš takisto v kategórii elit. A Peter mi neveril, tak pozrel sa tak na mňa, že tréner vážne 
a ja hovorím vážne, raz budeš štartovať. A Peter nielen, že na Majster sveta štartoval, Peter je juniorský majster sveta, Peter vyhral elit v Richmonde v Amerike, Peter obhajil titul opäť v Katare, takže stal sa obrovským, obrovským fenoménom a ja keď si na toto spomeniem, tak mám stále také zimomriavky po tele, pretože je to, je to pre mňa neskutočné, že tento malý chlapec, ktorý, ktorým som vyrastal, tak dosiahol takéto mety a čo je naozaj super, super hviezda, super talent v rámci nielen Slovenska, ale celého sveta. What makes Indy Ryan special as a bike rider is the fact that he is the first rider to take, and to date the only rider to take five Tours of France in succession um, without any breaks in between. Uh, not even Eddie Merckx could do that. On top of that, he's also got extra sort of like records, like he's the first rider and the only rider again to have taken the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France. Um, in the same year, two years on the row, uh, two years on the truck, 92-93. And, and that's what makes him, if you like, the most exceptional Spanish athlete of his generation, if not ever. The interesting thing about Indurain's young years as a young racer, an uh, amateur, and even before that, is that they're incredibly stable. There are no radical ruptures in terms of where he lived, in terms of any moves by the family state where they were, where he grew up in, in Villava. And so it's very easy in some ways to follow a continuous line of development because Indurain had one amateur team, one junior team, one professional team. Therefore, the influences that these people had on him were profound, long-lasting, and also they were the only ones that really count. Therefore, you go to the junior team, you talk to a guy like Pepe Barroso, the club cyclista president, and he will tell you almost everything you need to know about what Indurain was like as a racer at that time. When he won the carreras, if it was a sprint, you saw it. Then he said, Miguel, what have you done? And he said, first, Callandito, bajo, decía primero. Otros se notaba enseguida, iban corriendo, o el director con las flores, o en fin. Pero nosotros no éramos de esto. Le damos bocadillo de chorizo, de jamón, y luego les damos una Coca-Cola o, o refrescos, y en sitio les dan una botella de agua y a volar. Sí, sí. Y eso a Miguel le gustaba, sí. A él y a todos. Sí, 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 sí. sí. Eh, al principio era un chaval con muchas dificultades, incluso para pasar la media montaña, porque cuando llegó a nosotros, pues prácticamente estaba con casi 8 o 9 kilos por encima de lo que luego eh, se estabilizó como su peso forma habitual, ¿no? Eh, con lo cual, con, conforme él se fue depurando, lógicamente fue, él seguía manteniendo esa gran potencia que, que, que luego las consolidó en las contrarreloj, pero sobre todo en las etapas de llano y ya las etapas de media montaña, era eh, bárbaro realmente las, las cosas que hacía, eh, espectaculares, que luego a lo mejor terminaban cogiéndolo, pero de esto que dices es imposible lo que estoy viendo, y de hecho es que no he visto. No he visto después las cosas que, que él hacía de amateur. Everybody says, oh, yeah, 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 you know, he was never changed, he, he never changed, he never became, you know, that's the standard line people will trot out to you about athletes, is, you know, how little they changed and how sport did not go to their head. 
If they want a real example of that, if they want a real example of a, a sports person who did not become somebody else, they should look at Miguel Indurain because that is the person who never changed. And it was like the next person in the street that was also there. There was no kind of difference, no kind of, oh my God, it's Miguel Indurain, apart from the people that came up to him, but there was no sort of extra buzz, extra aura, extra fuss. And that is, I think, what makes Indurain so special. The thing that I like, you know, I think the most about him, I think what most people find most attractive about him is that he doesn't turn into a star. Llegabas a un hotel, por ejemplo, con el autobús y llegaban ocho corredores. Y pues, normalmente el masajista pues, tiene que ir a hacer la distribución, ¿no? Pues mientras que bajaban las maletas y tal, él se quedaba allí y él iba, cogía su maleta y la de otro y iba para recepción, mientras que otros iban... Ya sabes. Él llevaba la de él y la de otros, y si no estaba la de él, pues llevaba la de otros dos. His way of winning races was always to, he had a standard tactic, which was race hard in the time trials, defend in the mountains. He was a one-off phenomenon as a Spanish type of racer. There haven't really been any Miguel Indurain's following in his footsteps in Spain. The search for a new Indurain came to a very abrupt halt, maybe two, three years after he uh, retired. And um, since then, Spain, if you like, went back to its old ways, looking for riders who shone in the mountains and who could do well in the time trials, rather than the other way around. Y bueno, fui al aeropuerto por Miguel y vine al circuito y le dimos dos vueltas con el coche y vimos esto y tal. Y a la tarde le estaba dando masaje y me dice, ya verás, la gente va a esperar. Estar esperando a, los, a las montañas grandes para, para, para que vaya a ataques. Y aquí a uno se va a llevar a una sorpresa. Pero yo. There is the criticism of the lack of panache, but what Indoran had in spades was an ability to calculate, to control the races, to weigh up all the factors and put them all in his favor, line them all up in his favor, and by doing that win. So there was a, a combination of, if you like, native intelligence, superb bike handling, which people tend to forget about in the Rhine. He was one of the best bike handlers out there. Um, solid team backup and a strategy that was very hard to combat. Was somebody who won the Tour de France in a way that we haven't seen before or since. And that is, I think, something very special too. Cuando acababa el tour cuatro y media, a las cinco, esto se paralizaba en los bares, en, en, en toda Navarra prácticamente, gente que no le gustaba el ciclismo, pero como estaba Indurain ahí, eh, empezó a gustarle y estábamos ahí y la verdad fue una alegría inmensa, sí, sí, una alegría inmensa. Eh, luego ya como que te acostumbras, ¿entiendes? Ah, otro tour, otro, otro. Indurain managed to impact on a nation and become, if you like, representative of what Spain wanted to be and was moving towards becoming during the 1990s. When he wins the Tour de France in a very clinical, efficient, if you like, modern way, which to the Spanish chimed perfectly with their moving out of the ends and the consequences of the Franco era and into what they could consider a modern European democracy. The fact that he wasn't very communicative, the fact that he wasn't somebody who would open up very much, allowed people to kind of give him a, a veneer of modernity and this image of, of like forward-looking modern Spain that really in the Rhine the person doesn't have so much. That's what's quite curious as well, the contrast between in the Rhine the private person and the public persona that the media gave him. They got to the point that in the Rhine's lack of 
communication skills, if you like, at times played in his favour because people found it daunting, but at times had his team waking up in the morning and working out what on earth Indra Ryan was trying to tell them. The dramatic thing about the last year of Indoran's career is that it all falls apart so fast. In one year, he goes from winning the Tour de France for a fifth time, to losing the Tour de France, to abandoning his last Grand Tour in the Vuelta Ciclista España in 1996. And on the 2nd of January 1997, that's it, he's gone. He retires, end of story. I think the key element there is that his relationship with Echevarri Untue and the Benesto team fell apart very quickly um, and this led to a situation where Indurain felt that he would have to move on if he wanted to change teams, if he wanted to continue his career, but couldn't really see a way of doing that. I wasn't really sure if he wanted to do that. He'd been you know, at a top, the, the level of mental energy spent and physical energy spent simply maintaining his dominating position in the Tour de France had been so high that once he began to realize how high it was, I think it all just fell apart very fast. Yo casi crecí, pues, pues, eh, un poco en la dirección técnica del equipo, casi a la vez que, que su irrupción y, y consolidación de toda su carrera deportiva, ¿no? Eh, entonces, bueno, yo diría que, que, que el legado de Miguel lo que hizo es consolidar eh, una característica que con el paso de los primeros años eh, fue definitiva y que hemos seguido hasta ahora, ¿no? Que, que, que ha sido sobre todo un, equi un equipo con la mentalidad de, de correr para, para las clasificaciones generales finales, ¿no? That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle. But until then, keep up to date with us across social media. That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle, but until then, keep up to date with us across social media.